Hershey Park is a world-class amusement park. They have some of the best roller coasters in North America. Just look at coasters like Skyrush, Fahrenheit, and their newest roller coaster, Candemonium, as examples. But let's take a step back. Let's rewind the clock a little bit, back to the year 2005. It was only a year prior in 2004 where Hershey Park added their tallest and fastest roller coaster at the time, Storm Runner, an intimate accelerator coaster that launched riders from 0 to 75 miles per hour. The following year, another roller coaster that has now been forgotten had its chance to put its name into the Hershey Park Wall of Fame alongside these stellar roller coasters. However, a sketchy coaster manufacturer with poor communications, a lawsuit, and overall a series of unfortunate events caused this roller coaster to be canceled and to never see the light of day. This is the story of the Hershey Park roller coaster that was never built. Turbulence. Before we dive into turbulence, we have to dive into the state of Hershey Park in the year 2005 to try to understand the new addition. At the time of 2005, Hershey Park was really rising as a player in the coaster scene. As mentioned in the intro, they had the all-new Storm Runner alongside the B&M Invert Great Bear. The two put together gave Hershey Park a deadly one-two punch. Both were high-thrilling roller coasters made by rising manufacturers Intamin and Bulgar Mabillard, who was better known as B&M. But the park had so much more to offer as well. At the time of 2005, this was Hershey Park's coaster lineup. Comet, a PTC Woody, Trailblazer, an Aerodynamics Mine Train, Super Duper Looper, a Schwarzkopf Looper, Sidewander, a Vekoma Boomerang, Wildcat, a GCI Coaster, Great Bear, a B&M Invert, Wild Mouse, a Mac Wild Mouse Coaster, Lightning Racer, a dueling GCI, Roller Soaker, a Set Point USA suspended water coaster, and of course Storm Runner, the Intimate Accelerator. An impressive lineup, no doubt about it. In fact, one of the best, especially for the time period. So after an incredibly successful 2004 season where Storm Runner debuted, many Hershey Park goers were not expecting Hershey Park to add anything major in 2005, and if anything, they would return to investing in the family and kid portion of the park. However, what Hershey Park actually did couldn't have been anything different. The area we now know today as Founders Way was once called the Carousel Circle. This region of Hershey Park was home to two marquee attractions. The Carousel, obviously, but along with that, the Giant Wheel. The Giant Wheel was an intimate supplied double wheel that opened at Hershey Park in 1973. The Giant Wheel was the true icon of Hershey Park even more so than the coasters. The way we look at the pinwheel on the current day Ferris wheel did not even compare to how guests felt towards the giant wheel. Put it simply, this ride meant a lot to guests. This was absolutely justified as this giant wheel was a straight up beast. A 116 foot cross beam with three ends, each carrying a 12 arm wheel. The structure would raise about 100 feet to one of the sides and spin riders in a classic wheel motion. It even allowed riders to spin their own cabin with a wheel located inside each cabin. This ride was a capacity machine and could handle up to 2,000 guests per hour. No ride at Hershey Park could handle a crowd quite like the giant wheel. Complete with a pinwheel on the front of the cabin and even some LED lighting, the ride became notorious with the park. However, by the end of 2004, Hershey announced that the giant wheel would cease to exist following the conclusion of the season. Hershey guests were heartbroken deceived. Many guests typed hundreds upon hundreds of emails to Hershey asking them to change their minds and reverse the decision, while other guests were optimistic that Hershey Park truly had something sweet, no pun intended, in mind to make up for the incredible loss. Again, keep in mind that Stormart was built in the same season, so guests were really confused what was going on and what was to come to the sweetest place on earth.
Little did guests to know, Hershey Park had a contract with manufacturer Interactive Rides to build a $2 million roller coaster as early as April 2004. Interactive Rides Inc. is a very small player in the amusement industry. At the time of the contract with Hershey Park, they only had one ride that was open, the x Cream at the Stratosphere Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. In the coming years, the manufacturer would build additional attractions on top of the Stratosphere. But in the present day, in 2021, they only have three rides that are open, listed on their website, and they are practically irrelevant in the industry. Outside of the rides in the Stratosphere Hotel, that is. However, at the time of the contract with Hershey Park, they were seen as a potential rising player in the scene, and a ride opening at Hershey Park would be the manufacturer's biggest project yet, and undoubtedly put them in position to succeed for the future. The roller coaster that Interactive Rides would build at Hershey Park would be a prototype model of theirs, the Frequent Faller. The description of the ride is as follows. Riders are to be carried 150 feet vertically on a pivoting vehicle, will descend a series of five vertical U-turns as it makes its way back to ground level. Turbulence's unique track configuration will make it the first coaster in the world to ride on a track turned 90 degrees on its side for the entirety of the ride, while the actual car remains upright. As mentioned in the ride description, the ride would stand 150 feet tall, have 750 feet in track, and feature five drops. The first drop would be roughly 20 feet, and from there would slightly increase for each and every drop. An official top speed was never given for turbulence. It is also worth mentioning the ride only had a capacity of 750 guests per hour. Yes, you heard that right, 750 guests an hour. That isn't even close to half of what the giant wheel could produce per hour, which was 2,000. Perhaps this was a bad omen of what was to come with turbulence. Anyways, the ride would be painted red, white, and blue, and would stand in the plot of land that the giant wheel once stood on, adjacent to the carousel. Since the giant wheel was such an icon to the park, Hershey would have two huge signs on top of the coaster to replace it. Facing Comet, the sign would read Turbulence, and on the side facing the parking lot, the same sign would read Hershey Park. In fact, in honor of the new coaster edition, this section of the park would receive a complete makeover, and instead of being called Carousel Circle, it would now be known as Founder Circle. This area of the park would be dedicated to the park's founder, Milne Hershey. Turrence was slated to cost $2 million, alongside with the revamped section. In total, Hershey Park would spend $4 million on Turbulence and Founder Circle. Turbulence was slated to open on May 15, 2005. In the off-season leading up to 2005, word on Turbulence was awfully quiet, and Hershey enthusiasts were starting to speculate if the new coast would be ready for the slated May opening. On December 10th, 2004, only five months before Turbulence was supposed to have guests screaming and laughing on its five drops, Hershey Entertainment and Resorts, otherwise known as the company that owns Hershey Park, announced that the park was suing interactive rides for breach of contract and fraudulent inducement. The manufacturer, which at this time was only established for two years, informed Hershey that the coaster would have to surpass its $2 million price that was established in the contract by $1.12 million due to high steel costs. Put it simply, Interactive Rides could only build turbulence for $3.12 million at a minimum. Interactive Rides responded with filed counterclaims to Hershey's lawsuit. At this time, the turbulence roller coasters was not scrapped yet, but a 2005 opening was completely out of the question. It was only a few months later, in 2005, where we got the finale to the lawsuit. The court actually made a very interesting decision. The court issued summary judgments against both Interactive Rides and Hershey Entertainment and Resorts. After this, no other media updates were given about the case, and this was all we knew. For a good while, there was still hope from both parties that they could come to agreement and still open the turbulence eventually, despite the planned 2005 opening being completely out of the question. Ultimately, while never confirmed, it has been speculated and overall accepted that both Hershey and Interactive Rides just settled and went their separate ways respectively and scrapped turbulence altogether. With Interactive Rides, the manufacturer being so small, new, and now unreliable, along with an already sketchy roller coaster design to begin with, there is really no good reason for Hershey Park to proceed with turbulence. In the coming weeks to the 2005 season, all existence of turbulence was deleted from Hershey Park's website, servers, and history. 
This was truly a coaster before its time. If you are a roller coaster enthusiast, you may realize that Turbulence looks awfully familiar. That is because other ride models such as the Intamin Zack Spin or the SNS Free Spin resembled the structure of the cancelled coaster with clear improvements. The cancelling of Turbulence put interactive rides in grave danger, and to this day, they still have not really recovered, as they struggle to find work to this very day. Since 2003, the manufacturer has only installed three rides. Hershey Park fans were not happy, and understandably so, they got absolutely screwed by the manufacturer. So Hershey Park had to string some sort of action together to generate hype for the 2005 season, and announced that two kitty and family attractions would be refurbished and placed in the land that Turbulence would take, and prior to that, the giant wheel took. These kitty attractions were Balloon Flight and Starship America. Both rides are Hershey icons today in Founder's Way, and I'm sure you'll never look at them the same way ever again, knowing what could have been there instead. You may be thinking, Turbulence's story is now over, but that is simply not the case. 13 years after Turbulence's cancellation, in 2018, the ride concept was resurrected by ride engineer Switzerland in the form of the Wild Hide at Schwababen Park in Germany. The ride is still open today, and while it is not a complete replica to Turbulence, it is the closest thing we will likely ever see. So if you're Hershey Park crazy like me, and want to see what Turbulence would have been like, go head over to Germany and find out. This is a coast that is certainly on my bucket list for that reason alone. Regardless, I hope you all enjoyed this mini documentary on the cancelled Turbulence at Hershey Park. While it was said that the park could never open this coaster, it is arguably for the better, as Interactive Rides was oddly sketchy throughout this entire process, from the contract negotiations, to the coaster itself, and ultimately the lawsuit. For Hershey Park, they moved on just fine with additions such as Fahrenheit and Skyrush in the later years, and are still one of the greatest parks in America to this day. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate a like, and if you are new here, subscribe. I make daily videos on Hershey Park news, analysis, reviews, and history like the video you just watched. Comment down below what you think about Turbulence, and share this video with some people who have never heard about this canceled roller coaster. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the mini documentary, and from the Swedish channel on Earth to the Swedish viewers on Earth, thank you for watching, and have a good one. Peace.